The next type of equation we're going to look at are limosons. Um, they are going to be of the form r equals a plus or minus b sine theta or r equals a plus or minus b cosine theta. Very um, similarly to your circles, it's kind of nice that it stays consistent. These graphs for the sine, it's going to stay along the y-axis. For the cosine, the graph will stay along the x-axis. So again, that's great that it stays consistent. Also, if it's a plus versus a minus, again, the equation will either have a plus or a minus, not both. Um, if it has a plus, then it will be on the either top or the right side of the graph, and if there's a minus, it'll be on the bottom half or on the left side. So again, that stays consistent with circles, which is convenient. Um, we're going to fill out this chart to help us um, identify what the graph will look like, the general idea before we even have to start graphing them, so that will be convenient. Um, when I say ratio, it's the ratio of A over B. So you'll identify your A value and your B value, disregarding the sign. So it's almost like you can cover this up and look at the two numbers to get your ratio. Again, disregard the signs, and then the two values will be your ratio. So the first ratio scenario is going to be A over B. Let's make that look more like an A over B is less than 1. When your ratio of A over B is a value that's less than 1, the shape of the limason will be an inner loop. And I'm going to draw a little mini informal graph. And I want to use um, the example as if it was a sine equation. Um, an inner loop looks something. Let's see if I can do this. Like that. So again, this would be um, an example if it was a sine graph and if it was positive, a plus, not the minus, indicating that it's above the x-axis. And that's kind of, in general, what the inner loop will look like. The next ratio will be A over B equal to 1. When that's the case, then the shape will be in a cardioid. And let's draw a very, again, generic, informal graph of a cardioid for sine in the positive. Again, sine would have a plus. Cardioid kind of comes in like that. Kind of looks like a heart. Next is when your A over B is between 1 and 2, not inclusive. So that's your next scenario for your ratio when the ratio A over B is between 1 or 2. We would call it, um, it's dimpled. So if I were to draw this, um, it kind of goes in a little and then comes back out. So it's not a point like the cardioid, but it's not flat there. Last scenario is when A over B is greater or equal to 2. If that's the case, then you don't have a dimple, you don't have an inner loop, and I've seen some textbooks refer to it as convex. So it still kind of looks similar on the top half of the x-axis, and here it just kind of rounds out. So there's your th uh, four scenarios, always checking your ratio of A over B first. So if I were to look at an equation to actually graph, um, we could definitely do it by creating a theta R chart or an R theta chart and plotting points. Or we can use the shortcut sine or cosine, again, determines which axis you're falling along. If it's cosine, you're going to be along the x-axis again. Sine, it will be along the y-axis. The ratio A over B determines the shape. And again, we just went over that. Your four options, inner loop, cardioid, dimple, or convex. And again, the shortcut for graphing these, if you take A and add B to it, it will determine the height or how far it stretches. on the main axis. The value A will help you determine 
how far it stretches on the opposite axis. And if you do A subtract B, it will give you your lower point. So we're going to look at the graph of r equals 1 minus 2 sine of theta. So without doing any work, I know because it's a sine graph, it's going to be along the y-axis. Because this is a minus, I know the graph will fall below the x-axis. It'll be below. And then I want to look at my a and b. A is 1, B is 2, so if I look at that ratio, A over B, it equals 1 half. If you refer to the chart we just created, that value is less than 1, indicating this graph will have an inner loop. Using our shortcut, we're going to take um, the first one was a plus b. So when we take a and we add b to it, we get a value of 3. So 3 is the height or how far it stretches on the main axis. So because I know, again, because I know my graph has an inner loop and because it's a negative, I already know without doing any work, it's going to look something like that. So when I say a plus b equals 3, that's how far down it's going to go one or out. 1, 2, 3. So I know that one of the points is going to be here. The next thing to check was the value a. Again, a is 1. And that is how far it stretches on the opposite axis, so how far it comes out in both directions from the origin. And then if I take a minus b, again, a is 1 b is 2, when I subtract those, I get negative 1, and that tells you um, the lower point. Because it's a negative, the point actually comes into the graph, 1. So now I know that I'm going to kind of connect the dots in a very, again, informal graph. kind of lopsided, um, creating my polar curve with an inner loop. In this example, we're going to graph the polar equation r equals 3 plus 4 cosine theta. Again, because you have a plus and it's just a cosine of theta, we know that it's going to be a limosome. First thing I want to identify is that because it's cosine, I know it's going to fall along the x-axis. Because it's a positive, I know that the graph will be on the right side over here. And um, let's see, let's identify our A and our B. So A is 3, B is in front of the cosine, which is 4. So I'm going to look at the ratio A over B, which is 3 fourths. If you check the chart, a over b um, equaling 3 fourths is less than 1, so this graph will have an inner loop. So without doing any work, we know that this graph will be somewhere over here, looking kind of like that. So next I want to talk about if we were to take a plus b. If we do that, we get 3 plus 4, which is 7. So 7 is how far this graph, its height, or how far it will stretch on the main axis. So it's how far it comes out. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Next, we're going to look at a. Again, a is just 3. That's how far it goes in the opposite axis. So 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. And then when we take a minus b, we get 3 minus 4 is negative 1. That's how far 
um, or what we say like the lower point is, but again in this case it's going to, because it's a negative, come into the graph negative one. And so because it's an inner loop, I know that the graph will go something like this, and then it's going to, like a connect the dots, go to that point, come all the way out here, head back to there, and come back in to connect. So there's your polar curve, r equals 3 plus 4 cosine theta. You can also plug this into a calculator and look at it a little bit more accurately. Our next example says graph r equals 2 minus cosine of theta. What we're going to do is draw our a, b, maybe let's make it an a, b chart. a is 2, b is the number in front of cosine, which is 1. By creating the ratio a over b, you would get 2 over 1, which equals 2. And if you check the chart, 2 is greater or equal to 2, therefore telling us that this is going to have no inner loop, no dimple, and it's actually going to be convex. Without doing any work, because it's cosine, I know that the graph will lie along the x-axis. Because this is negative, we know that our graph will end up on this side. Next, if we take a and add b, you get 2 plus 1, which is 3, and that tells us how far the graph will be stretched on the main axis, so we're going to count out 3, 1, 2, 3. Then if you identify a, which is 2, that's going to take you in the opposite direction, out 2. And finally, if we do a subtract b, you get 2 minus 1, which is 1, and that tells you um, where you're we before called it a lower point, but because it's a positive, we're actually going to come out one. And what you get is this graph. And because we are, or excuse me, we already know that it's convex, it's going to round out right there. So no inner loop and no dimple.